RU58841, also known as PSK3841. You may have heard of this name, you may have not, but either way, after you finish watching this video, you will get all the information you need about RU58841. Why do so many people still use it and swear by it and keep telling these stories about how it completely reversed their baldness? Even here in my comment section, I see it all the time. While another group of people claim that it caused them life-threatening side effects. And if RU58841 is even half successful, as some of these people claim, why did its mother company stop developing it? Well. I did my research and I'm gonna be answering all of these questions in an unbiased manner in this video. And in the end of the video, I'm gonna be giving you my personal take on RU58841 and whether I recommend using it for androgenetic alopecia or not. But before jumping right into the subject, I wanted to go ahead and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the latest hair loss treatments and new release data and research I post here regularly. And the first fact that we know about RU58841 is that it's different from finasteride in terms of blocking uh, DHT. We know that androgenetic alopecia is caused by the hypersensitivity of hair follicles to DHT, dihydrotestosterone, and we know that DHT is formed from testosterone by the enzyme 5 alpha-reductase. So finasteride actually treats male pattern baldness by blocking this enzyme 5 alpha-reductase so that DHT cannot be formed and synthesized and hair follicles will not be malnourished and damaged by the effects of DHT. But RU58841 has slightly a different mechanism of action in which RU doesn't only block DHT, but it completely blocks all the androgens in the body. Uh, it does that by binding to the androgen receptors on hair follicles. Uh, RU58841 is a topical treatment, so it will only bind to the androgen receptors on the scalp, on the application site. So it binds to the androgen receptors on hair follicles and it prevents DHT and other androgens from binding to those follicles. Thus, um, there will be no damaging effects of androgens to hair follicles. And this is actually why some people claim that RU is better than finasteride in terms of improving the hair count and the hair shaft diameter because um, androgenetic alopecia is caused by the hypersensitivity of hair follicles not only to DHT but to androgens in general. And we know that DHT is the most potent androgen but it's not the only androgen in the body. Testosterone also is counted as androgens and also DHEA and other physiological molecules that exert androgenetic effects in the body. So RU58841 blocking the effects of all the androgens on hair follicles actually has a better outcomes in terms of preventing and treating and maybe to some extent reversing uh, androgenetic alopecia theoretically. And in this aspect RU58841 is comparable to pyrolutamide that's uh, being developed by the company Kintor Pharma. I did multiple videos about pyrolutamide. You can go ahead and watch them after uh, finishing watching this video, of course. But um, RU58841 differs from finasteride primarily by its mechanism of action and theoretically by its potential superiority in terms of efficacy. And the second fact that we know about RU58841, and this is a big one, is that there were no human clinical trials done on RU58841. All this anticipation and all this excitement you see on the internet is only because of the preclinical trials done in the 90s about this compound. There was one interesting trial done on nude mice in which the authors took female mice and they transplanted hair follicles from people that are susceptible to androgenetic alopecia and they conditioned those mice in a way that their body now makes testosterone. So those hair follicles that are transplanted from human beings should now theoretically fall and be damaged just like they would have been if they stayed in their original human specimen. And the results indicated that applying RU58841 blocked the testosterone activity on those hair follicles, which basically means that RU58841 is potentially successful in treating male pattern baldness in human beings. And there was a second study done in 1998 on monkeys, but there was no official uh, published results 
of any human clinical trial. We have only personal anecdotes published by different users on hair loss forums, but we have no official results of any human clinical trial. And this is a big, big fact because not always preclinical trials or trials done on animals in 100% of the times translate to human beings. So keep this in mind. And remember when I said that there was no official results of any human clinical trials? That's because in fact, number three, we know that uh, RU58 or one was already subjected to human clinical trials. We just don't have the results of those trials and the company didn't bother to publish it. There's actually a phase one and phase two A trials done on human beings in France. The phase two trials were done under the supervision of Dr. Dominique Van Heste and thankfully one user on Reddit uh, who goes by the name Burgi managed to talk to Dr. Van Neste on the phone and he said that the compound was a very interesting compound that was in human trials for over six months he claimed that there were no safety issues and he thinks that the company dropped research because of financial concerns or concerns of efficacy. But remember guys, this is just a user on Reddit. So uh, I'm not in any way, shape or form diminishing his efforts, but uh, I'm planning to personally try to email Dr. Dominique uh, as I speak French myself and try to get to the bottom of this and personally verify whether this information is right or wrong. And I will keep you updated once I get any information about it. So to sum this up, there were actually clinical trials done on humans in France. Uh, the company just didn't bother to publish those results officially for some reason. And the fourth information that we know about RU5841 is that um, this compound has a long history of shifting its developmental rights from one company to another. And it actually maybe has something to do with why it didn't make it into the market. So try to keep up with me in the timeline here. RU5841 was first researched by French pharmaceutical company Roussel Uclaf. Roussel Uclaf was then bought by a German company Hussheft. AG in 1997. I'm sure I butchered that pronunciation. <laughs> but then RU5841 was then picked up by Prustwaken and it was at that time that it was renamed PSK3841. And then in 2011, Prustwaken was bought by a Japanese company called Kiyua Kiren and the project got cancelled ever since. Some say that the project got abandoned because of the life-threatening side effects found in the phase 2 clinical trials, which is contradictory to what Dr. Dominique said. But two other hypotheses are that uh, the company simply didn't have the funds to continue the research or the estimated revenue from this compound just didn't make it reasonable for the company to continue investing in RU5841. And the fifth information that we want to know about RU5841 is whether it has any systemic absorption. After all, this is a blocker of the androgen receptor, and if it has any systemic absorption into the systemic circulation, it could cause big time problems that extend even beyond block and DHT. Side effects from RU5841 may include block and testosterone, which means very dangerous side effects, especially to the male body. And for this one, we have two narratives. We have the official narrative from the uh, company that researched the companies, should I say, that researched and developed this compound. Also, the uh, authors from the study in the phase two clinical trials, like uh, Dr. Dominique. And they both said that the, the preclinical and also in the clinical trials done so far on RU5841, which there are not a lot, by the way, uh, there is no systemic absorption of this compound into the systemic circulation. And this can be found on the Prostwaken uh, website, by the way, which is a former company, if you remember, of RU5841. And uh, this website doesn't exist anymore, but uh, one user on Reddit was able to restore it with the help of Google's time machine. And the information about RU5841 here says, that it has demonstrated similar efficacy after six months treatment as that observed with current oral therapy for alopecia. I think they're referring to finasteride here. Again, no systemic antiandrogenic side effects were observed. 
So this is one narrative, the official narrative that we've got about the possible side effects of RU. But there is an, an official narrative. There is a large number of users uh, that shared their experience with RU5841 uh, on the internet and on different hair loss forums. And a lot of them indicated very significant uh, side effects. Those side effects went from vision problems to sexual side effects like a significant decrease in libido, uh, sexual erectile dysfunction, to cardiovascular side effects uh, like chest pain and heart palpitations. And this could be uh, easily explained by the fact that we know that RU5841 not only blocks DHT but also blocks the effects of testosterone. So if there is even a little systemic absorption into the systemic circulation, uh, RU could uh, block testosterone from exerting its effects on the human body and we already know that uh, decreased levels of testosterone in the uh, human body and especially again in the male body is associated with coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes and this is all without even mentioning the sexual side effects. So what is my personal take on RU5841 and uh, would I recommend you to start using it and uh, to include it in your hair loss stack? Well, uh, before giving you my opinion, I want to say two important things. The first one is that uh, I actually got uh, the opportunity to do a sponsorship for this video to promote uh, my audience to buy RU5841 and I refused because um, I don't have anything against sponsorships. I think uh, they're a good way to help uh, YouTube creators financially, but uh, I declined that particular sponsorship because uh, as I was researching this video and I was reading the personal anecdotes, I could in no faith recommend this compound for any financial gains. And the second thing that I wanted to say is that we should never take personal anecdotes as a scientific evidence. We have a pyramidic hierarchy of scientific evidence and this model have been done for a reason. Uh, now, you may have a cousin or maybe a friend or a brother who tried RU5841 and who swears by it. And I see even people on uh, my comment section coming to me and saying, Hey, Fedi, I've tried RU5841 or I tried pyrolutamide and uh, I don't agree with the particular thing that you said about the safety issues. And my answer is always the same. I say, I do understand your experience and I appreciate you sharing this experience here and I want for uh, people and my audience to share their experiences in my uh, comment section as they provide information for other users. But uh, you should never take your individual experience and project it as an overall idea or an overall profile for a particular compound. And this is the reason why we have meta-analysis and randomized controlled trials with hundreds, maybe sometimes thousands of subjects because there are just a lot of variables that you could never control in your individual experience or in the experience of your cousin or your brother or a friend maybe or another user on Reddit. So that's my philosophy in medicine and how I approach these problems and I just wanted to clarify this before giving you my take. And now, my take on RU5841. Uh, from a personal standpoint, I am usually against banning things and preventing people from their freedom to experiment whatever the hell they want uh, in their bodies. But uh, my issue with this is we already have finasteride and minoxidil and soon to be FDA approved pyrolutamide, hopefully. So why would you risk your own cardiovascular health even if it's personal anecdotes and you have maybe known somebody who doesn't, uh, didn't experience those uh, particular side effects and his 10-year uh, experience with RU5841, but it's still there, it's flowing on the internet and we do not have any human clinical trials to deny those uh, anecdotes. So my question is, why would you even risk your cardiovascular health when we have other FDA-approved treatments with uh, 10 years, maybe even 20 years in the case of finasteride of safety profiling. If you already tried finasteride and minoxidil and you didn't find any satisfactory results after one or two years of using them, 
Well, then I could maybe understand you trying to reach for those experimental treatments. And even then, I would say that you should do the most extensive amount of research before even thinking about buying RU5841. And especially if you decided to start taking this treatment, please closely monitor yourself. Regularly do lab tests, do uh, EKGs, uh, do cardiac function tests, just monitor yourself because this treatment could be very dangerous and potentially life-threatening. I remember even once reading about a case of cardiac tamponade because of uh, RU5841 and unfortunately there is no way for us to know for sure whether these personal anecdotes are associated with RU5841 or with personal other uh, variables. That was from a personal standpoint, but now from a primary healthcare provider standpoint. Uh, some of you may know I am in my fifth year of medical school. Uh, I would be receiving my medical doctorate diploma next year and become a doctor, hopefully. So I consider myself from now um, uh, a healthcare provider and uh, I think I share the responsibilities of primary healthcare providers. So in no good faith I could recommend this compound to my viewers, to you guys, because uh, I told you my philosophy of how I approach these problems and how you should approach it as well. If there is no clinical evidence that's on the top of that hierarchy that we talked about of scientific evidence, I just choose to abstain from that compound and don't even look at the personal anecdotes posted by other users on the internet. Because again, there could be a lot of other variables that cause that uh, reversal of hair loss or some people could just be lying. You have no way to know. So that was it. That was my personal take on RU5841. If you guys have any additional information about RU, please include it in the comment section. Also, uh, click on that uh, like button if you found the video informative and subscribe. And check some of my other videos about Cosmarna. I just posted that video last week and got about 4K views, which is um, immensely surprising to my channel. Uh, also, I have videos about vertoporfin and uh, GT20029 and pure lutamide. So if you're interested in alternative treatments and soon to be approved treatments for androgenetic alopecia, you can go and binge watch my content. Uh, and with that being said, stay safe.